<clears throat> Good, thank you so much for the introduction. Hi, everyone. My name is Ashok Kaliswamy. Um, I have a contestant on the autopilot team. Hopefully, you're able to hear my voice and see my screen and video and things. Please let me know if that's not the case. But yeah, today I would like to present uh, our work on what we think is going to be the foundation model for uh, autonomy and robotics. This is not just the work of myself. I'm representing a large team of talented engineers in our team. Let's get started. Um, our team has shipped the full self-driving beta software to uh, everyone who has purchased it in the United States and Canada. Um, there's roughly 400,000 vehicles, and today they have driven uh, up to 250 mile, 50 million miles uh, on FSD beta. Uh, I think the cool thing about this is that this is a scalable self-driving stack that you can take the car anywhere to the U.S., turn it on, put it in a destination, and the car would attempt to navigate to the destination, you know, handling all of the uh, in, in, like turns, stopping at traffic lights, interacting with other objects. And all of this is driven primarily by the eight cameras that are on the car that are uh, giving a full 360 degree coverage uh, around the car. The reason that works uh, well is because our stack is based on, you know, really modern machine learning based stack where uh, a lot of the components of the self-driving stack are just folded into neural, neural networks. And I would say this is different than the more traditional approach to self-driving, which uses a localization maps, a lot of radar, radar, ultrasonics, et cetera, to fuse together. Uh, instead, this is primarily being driven by just cameras. And uh, you can, if you have a test by yourself, you can obviously buy the car and experience it. Otherwise, you just have to take my word or look at some videos, but it works uh, quite well. And we are in the process of making it even better. I shared about these occupancy networks that are one of the more important pieces in our stack. Um, I would consider this as one of the foundational model uh, tasks because this is very general. This is a very general task and doesn't have any specific ontology um, or like at least robust to ontology errors. Uh, it really just predicts whether some voxel in 3D space is occupied or not uh, and the probability of that. And, uh, and it can hence represent you know, arbitrary scenes. There is no um, labeling or ontology design required. And it's quite general uh, and can apply like anywhere. In addition to just the occupancy, we also predict the flow of voxels in the future that kind of like gives arbitrary motion as well. Um, and everything runs in real time. This is quite similar to NERF in general, uh, but unlike NERF or like say multi-view reconstruction, which is usually done for a single scene, uh, the, we predict the occupancy based on the eight cameras in real time. So the video stream in, and then we just predict for all of space uh, around the car, uh, on whether this voxel is occupied or not, as opposed to like doing this post, like offline post-processing step. So architecture looks, um, you know, uh, with a lot of, it looks very complicated, but then it's actually not that complicated in the end. Um, videos from multiple cameras stream in, and you can choose whatever backbone you want, you know, regnets, uh, whatever the latest bits, uh, you can throw anything in there, and then everything comes together in, a uh, large transformer block that does sort of a spatial attention to build up features and also does temporal attention um, with some like geometry thrown in there to form some features that, that can then be upsampled uh, into the actual predictions. Uh, it's, it's quite straightforward, even though the diagram looks a bit complicated. And the same architecture and the modeling can be used not just for occupancy, but for other tasks that are needed for driving. Um, obviously, lanes and roads are very important for dri driving tasks, but I'd say lanes are quite obnoxious um, to predict. The reason is, um, you know, first of all, lanes are higher dimensional objects, unlike, um, you know, it's definitely not like 1D or 2D, like, you know, high dimensional, and then they have like a graph structure. Um, like objects, for the most part, like say vehicles, they're self-contained, they're just, you know, local, whereas like, lanes can span the entire road. You can see multiple miles of lanes in your view, um, and they can fork and merge and cause all kinds of trouble in the modeling. <laughs> um, they also have large uncertainty. Sometimes you don't, you might not be able to, like, um, view the lanes because they're occluded, or it's nighttime, uh, only part of the lane is visible. And it's not just that sometimes, even if everything is visible, 
even humans cannot agree on whether something that you're looking at is two lanes or one lane, for instance. So there's a ton of uncertainty in um, like what are lanes. And then it's not sufficient to just predict them as some kind of raster. Uh, it's very hard to use downstream then. So it's better to predict them as some kind of vector representation, you know, like polylines, splines, polynomials, et cetera, to help with use, ease of use. And all of this needs to happen within tens of milliseconds in real time. Like I said, it's like a very difficult problem to predict lanes in real time in the real world. Nonetheless, uh, we use state-of-the-art generative modeling techniques. Um, in this case, uh, we use you know, autoregressive transformers, quite similar to, I would say, GPT, uh, in terms of how we model the lanes. So we can predict the, uh, you know, you can tokenize the lanes and then predict them one token at a time. Um, unlike language, which is mostly linear, we have to, you know, predict the full graph structure. Hence, we come back, uh, predict, you know, what are the forking point, what is the merging point, et cetera. And everything is done end to end uh, using neural networks with like, little to no post-processing required after this. Another important task for self driving is obviously moving objects, you know, vehicles, trucks, pedestrians, what have you. Uh, and it's not sufficient to just detect them. You need to have their full kinematic state um, and also predict their shape information, their futures, et cetera. All of these models, the models that I described earlier, even the lanes one and objects one, are in some ways multimodal models in the sense that they take in not just camera um, video streams, they also take in other inputs, such as, um, in this case, egos own kinematics. So egos, um, velocity, acceleration, jerk, et cetera, all goes in. Uh, we also provide in um, the navigation instructions to the lanes to kind of guide us where to, like which lane to use, et cetera. So everything is done in, within the network. That's why I say it's like a modern machine learning stack where instead of doing this in post-processing, we just try to combine everything and then do perception sort of end-to-end, -end, uh, so to speak. So here you can see predictions of these uh, models. Um, the lanes that you see here, the vehicles that you see here are all just predicted, again, these, by these networks with a lot of post-processing. There is no tracking or anything like that uh, in, the, in the things that you're seeing here. So overall, you know, I would say that's quite stable. The green um, spines that are coming out of these vehicles are just their forecasted future. It's kind of like a standard task at this point, I would say, uh, but you know, it all, all works quite nicely and in real time yeah, in the car. Doesn't have to stop with just perception too. Once we have all of these percepts, um, you know, like lanes, occupancy, objects, and even a few more like traffic controls uh, and other things, you can do the entire motion planning um, also using just a network. Um, I won't go into too many details on like how we do that, but essentially, you know, it can just be thought of as like one more task instead of uh, it being a separate thing. So how is all of this possible? And I think it's because we have built the sophisticated auto labeling pipeline that gives us data from the entire fleet, uh, you know, millions of video clips across the entire world uh, can be tapped. On the left side, what you're seeing is um, an example of multi trip reconstruction where we choose some location Multiple Tesla vehicles driving through the location uh, upload the, their video clips and other other like you know vehicle kinematic data to us. We bring everything together uh, and reconstruct the entire three D scene. Um, so the um, spline, uh, the polylines that you look you know there's the cyan colored one. There's also a few other colored ones. Those are all different cars doing different trips uh, through the world, and uh, it's actually all well very well aligned. Let me see if I can play it again. Yeah. The pink line and the cyan line that you see there, those are like different trips of different cars uh, driving around and everything is just aligned very nicely. Um, and this multi-trip reconstruction has enabled us to, you know, get all the lanes, road lines, um, everything directly from the fleet in the millions, um, any, anywhere on earth, essentially. Once you have this like base um, structure of trajectories, calibration, from all these cameras, you can really do a lot of cool things to reconstruct the entire scene. I'm not sure if the video plays quite nicely, uh, but in my own on screen, it looks very smooth where you can see the ground surface. Uh, it's reconstructed quite nicely. Um, there's like no artifacts such as double vision or blurring. Things are like crisp, um, geomet look like geometric, they are correct. Um, this is a hybrid approach to NERF and um, general 3D reconstruction. Sometimes a NERF, even though the um, re-rendered visuals might look very nice. 
the underlying geometry might be very fuzzy and cloudy. Um, so we have a hybrid approach, which works quite nicely. And you can see here, you know, the barriers, the vehicles, even trucks, et cetera, are reconstructed pretty accurately. Once we have these uh, reconstructions, we then run even more neural networks just offline to produce the labels that we want. Like I had mentioned earlier, for lanes, we need uh, some kind of vector representation to make it very easy to use. Um, so instead of just using the raster directly, take rasters, we have offline neural networks that run on top of it and then produce the vector representation that can be then used as labels for the online stack. Similar to the lanes, like once you have the lanes and the roads reconstructed, you can also auto label traffic lights. Here you're seeing traffic lights auto labeled by your system without any human inputs. Um, and these are all like multi view consistent. Let me try to play it again. Yeah, um, we, we can predict their you know, shape, color, relevancy. Uh, you can see this white traffic lights on the side. They also reproject correctly into all the camera views. And it's because we have this really good. Uh, auto labeling system that calibrates everything jointly and it's like pixel perfect in 3D space. Uh, 